Hey guys, so it's been another crazy day in crypto. I'm going to summarize everything that happened today, and then I'm going to play this video for you of Justin Sun, uh, who just went live on Bloomberg Global Financial, basically talking about his deal with FTX about allowing withdrawals through his Tron tokens. So I'm going to go over that in a minute, but first let's go over what's happened today. So first of all, Justin Sun, there was an announcement 15 hours ago from FTX saying we are pleased to announce that we had reached an agreement with Tron to establish a special facility to allow holders of Tron, BTT, JST, Sun, and HT to swap assets from FTX one-to-one -to, -one to external wallets. Now, this was huge news, and Justin Sun retweeted it. This caused Tron's price to pump like crazy. Uh, it went up to, I think, over $2 before. Now it's settling, I believe, around $0.35 cents versus the normal market. It's around 5 to $0.06. Cents. So people are getting roughly you know, six to seven cents on the dollar, um, uh, or more so, uh, actually a little more than that, probably about 15 to 20 cents on the dollar, um, depending what price they bought Tron at. But that's what's going on right now. And again, Justin actually elaborates a little bit on it on this Bloomberg interview, but again, I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but that's what people are assuming right now to try to get their funds off. In addition to that, there's been some a lot of controversy with Caroline, who was the CEO of Alameda. There's been some old videos of her um, based on a podcast, and she talks about what they do at Alameda, and I'll just play this video for you. Uh, it's pretty surprising. Yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. Being comfortable with risk is very important. <laughs> um, <laughs> we tend not to have things like stop losses. I think those aren't necessarily a great risk management tool. I'm trying to think of a good example of a trade where I've lost a ton of money. Um, well, I don't know. I probably don't want to go into specifics too much yeah, with that. <laughs> yeah. So that video speaks for itself, basically. Uh, she looks like she's inept and basically a lot of her comments, they don't use stop losses. She doesn't want to talk about how much losses she's had in the past. Again, kind of makes sense of where we're at today. So that was something that happened. And then there's actually been some other big stuff where we've had um, someone big actually start withdrawing their money. Basically, they asked for a KYC account and they bought that account from someone um, in the Bahamas because the Bahamas, basically, I guess there was an agreement where they got to withdraw their funds from FTX. So a lot of people were buying KYC Bahamas accounts and then transferring their funds out that way. Uh, but this guy did it publicly and you can see Flood retweeted about it. And a lot of people are actually really mad about that because this guy, you know, was able to get all his funds out, you know, doing it quote unquote legally, illegally. And yeah, so it's causing a big controversy. So this whole Bahamas thing uh, is definitely big in the news. So a lot of people are going to be talking about this over the next few days. And then also the FTX uh, people at FTX were taking bribes to basically verify KYC accounts within minutes. So versus it taking, you know, a couple days. So that was something big. And then also there were people using NFTs on FTX to be able to withdraw their funds as well. So it said, apparently this is a Bahamas account withdrawing other people's funds for them. They are likely bypassing the internal balance transfers block by selling NFTs on FTX's NFT marketplace. Bahamas account creates an NFT. The stuck user buys the NFT with their full balance and then they send them back. So... <laughs> This was something that got brought to FTX's attention and then FTX stopped it and now uh, they halted. But there was over 50 million volume on FTX uh, before they halted that. So, you know, kudos to anyone that was able to get their money off. Um, but yeah, you can see people are trying to get their money out any way they can. You can't really blame them. Um, but on top of that, so Matt Huang is the co-founder of Paradigm and former partner of Sequoia has deleted all of his FTX related tweets. So people are trying to delete delete their tracks, uh, cover their tracks, and basically, you know, act like they never tweeted anything about FTX ever, which obviously you can still pull up deleted tweets. That's not hard to do. So expect a lot of controversy on that. There's been some controversy about CZ and SBF and about Sam actually causing the Luna collapse and taking down Three Arrows Capital. Um, this was actually retweeted by Sue Zhu, uh, one of Three Arrows Capital guys. So this has created a lot of controversy as well. And then also exchanges and potentially halting withdrawals. So there was a tweet here that says, I'm hearing from reliable sources that crypto.com, KuCoin, and several big OTC desks had huge exposure to FTX and are basically screwed. Now, 
This is actually false because here you can see he replies, it says crypto.com will publish a list of cold wallet addresses and balances for the majority of assets within 24 hours. And then KuCoin has no direct exposure to FTX. And yeah, there's basically people that are responding that, hey, this is fake news and there's no FUD that's been unconfirmed. So, but I still recommend getting your funds off of exchanges because there was one tweet by Kobe uh, that says, if you have money in Gemini Earn, I'd advise pulling that. So again, get in self-custody, get a decentralized wallet, MetaMask, cold storage, Ledger, Trezor, again, something right now off exchanges just to be on the safe side. So again, you saw there was a lot going on today. So Hope y'all learned some stuff from that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play this video from Justin Sun on Bloomberg, uh, not even an hour ago, and it's about 10 minutes long if y'all wanna watch it. Just now from Singapore. Justin, fantastic to have you on the show. It's been characterized by some then as a potential bailout uh, by uh, Tron of FTX. Is that how we should be thinking about it? Where are you in these conversations? What are your plans? So first of all, uh... I think this is a tragedy moment and a sad day for our industry. Um, so FTX has uh, gained to uh, this kind of the liquidity trouble. So that's why I'm thinking right now is a good moment to show the unity of our industry. Uh, so that's why uh, 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 we come to agreement uh, to first allow uh, FTX users to uh, withdraw Tron token first to increase the liquidity and solve the problem at, at least in the temporary level. Uh, right now, uh, we are still in discuss with FTX about uh, the further plan, uh, but I don't want to like deliver uh, anything or give anybody expectation um, mm. before uh, we actually deliver it. No, no, I understand that. And there's a lot of opacity and, and, and obviously desperation from many within the space to get some clarity on the future of FTX. So I, ju I just want to push you a little bit, uh, yes. Justin. So this was the first step then, releasing some Tron tokens and some of these other tokens uh, that you will now take custody of, presumably. Um, where, what do you think, what are the potential options for you and Tron? Are you looking at debt investments, equity investments, a full takeover? What is on the list for you as you weigh up your options vis-a-vis -vis FTX? Yes, I, I think definitely uh, the things you mentioned is all possible. I, I think in the future, I, I think first of all, uh, we have several priority uh, definitely, uh, the first thing I think is protect the whole industry because right now, uh, as we know, um, the whole crypto market is very fragile. So, so everybody uh, um, suffer a lot from the decline of the major cryptocurrency. And also, of course, we want to protect the reputation of the whole industry about uh, centralized exchange and the dear image before uh, regulators. So we want to show uh, responsibility. Uh, we want to show like everybody um, in the industry is united and we can come through uh, the difficulties. Uh, and also, of course, I think we want to uh, help our partners, our players in the industry. So that's why I think uh, all the um, basically the possible uh, possibility you speak here, uh, we will um, measure it and uh, uh, see how we can take action on it. So debt, equity, investment on the list as potential options for you. Justin, can you give us some clarity on how much you're prepared to spend? Does Tron have the balance sheet to, to do a potential full takeover if, if it comes to that? And will you personally be investing any of your own funds in this? Yes, I think definitely all of this is uh, is on the table. Uh, but right now, I think the most important thing is still we need to uh, do uh, a full due diligence and at the same time to uh, evaluate uh, the situation to have a full picture of like what's going on, like how serious is the uh, liquidity uh, crunch. Um, so basically, once we get the full picture, uh, I, I think we will start to uh, making moves. But Justin, you're feeling right now, so how big is a hole at FTX? We're reporting about $8 billion and $4 billion to just continue operating. Is this the kind of figures that you're also looking at? Uh, currently, uh, I don't have the exact number, but uh, I think um, at least uh, uh, we are talking about uh, billions here.
billions, but at least four billions. And going back, if they need four billions to operate it, to Tom's good question, do you have that? Can you support them like this? Um, I think right now, if um, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, right? So I see uh, Ruto's like report on like four billions, like eight billions. I don't have the exact number, um, but we have um, on our side we know the concept, right? So uh, mm. I think if in this kind of the level, uh, I, I think is uh, something on the table here. Uh, Justin, I know you know CZ or uh, Zhao Changpeng uh, very well as well of Binance. Um, early in the week, he'd suggested he was ready yes. for a bailout. Do, do you know what put Binance off? Do you know what they saw or what it was that CZ came to, the conclusion he came to? He, he pulled away. Do you know why that was? Yes, sure. Uh, definitely, I admire and uh, respect the courage uh, CZ have um, to take the first action uh, into uh, FTX, like bailout. Uh, I think he, he tried like really hard uh, eventually, uh, he didn't make it, but, but I still uh, believe this is very important to show uh, the stance to uh, help the partners. Even uh, we might know, like before, uh, FTX uh, ha and the, uh, Binance is a big rebel. Um, I, I think that's the first thing. And then the second thing here, so I think for us, we are taking a different approach. So as you see, um, like the recent action we have done, basically we will take our um, take care of our customer first, and then we will uh, start to uh, measure it and start to see what we can do here. Um, so basically, we don't want to commit like too much uh, in the first step. Yeah, when it comes to regulations, we know that the Bahamas regulator has frozen uh, the assets of, of FTX. How complicated does that make your job as you look to a potential rescue? Yes, first of all, I think talk to regulators uh, is very important. Uh, we want to respect the, like, the local authorities and the, their decisions. Uh, so that's why I think the regulator consideration and their idea about like how a serious like the FTX um, problem is and, and how we can resolve this. Uh, we definitely want to engage regulators into the conversation and respect their uh, decisions and understand what they are concerned and how we can resolve it. And, and just, Justin, a lot of this is about trust and, and transparency. And, and so on that note, I wanted to ask about Huobi, uh, which is another important exchange. And there have been reports that you have taken over via vehicle in Hong Kong, that you've taken over Huobi. Uh, is, is that the case? Um, what is your position with Huobi? Have you through any mechanism in Hong Kong or any individual taken over that entity? Um, so I'm currently the member of the, the advisory board of Huobi. Um, personally speaking, I don't own like any uh, Huobi uh, shares or anything. Um, but also I, I'm a big advocate for transparency of exchange uh, for sure. I think recently Huobi have dedicated to a uh, Merkur tree uh, tested um, uh, tested for the exchange transparency. So basically, like all the users can see, uh, exchange has 100% reserve uh, for customer funds. Uh, I, I think this is very really important because all the traditional industry uh, um, they all have this kind of the 100% like reserve funds uh, information and be fully transparent to the customer, uh, which I think definitely this needs to be a, a industry standard. Yeah, and, and you offloaded your mainland Chinese uh, customers or users of Huobi uh, early in the year. Do you look to bring them back on at some point, Justin? Uh, so currently we don't have plan on it. Uh, I think we will fully bind in by the regulators uh, uh, decide what to do. OK, and just back to FTX, if this if this goes under and you aren't able to, to salvage it or save this business, is that the death knell for centralized Bitcoin and crypto exchanges, Justin, potentially? Um, I think right now, most of the players in the industry uh, is doing uh, good. For example, Binance, uh, Huobi, uh, Kraken, like Coinbase, they are all, I, I think, in a, a good position. 
So that's why I, I think even FTX going down, it won't have a big impact on the industry overall. Um, but still, I believe this is a very important and tragic moment for the industry because before that, FTX is definitely one of the most prestigious uh, exchange in the world, has lots of very big names on their investor list, uh, like Sequoia like, uh, and also pension yeah. funds. So that's yeah. why I think the fail of, failure of FTX is definitely going to, okay. uh, I, I think, harm the confidence of the institution investor. Justin, really appreciate your time. Justin Sun, the founder of Tron, on this potential bailout. Right, guys, so that was a video with Justin Sun. So you can hear what he said. So pretty much just doing more due diligence, doing what they can to basically get everyone's funds out with, you know, the said Tron tokens, Tron, BTT, etc. So that's why Tron's been going up. And yeah, we'll see what happens from this over the next few days. Again, a lot of stuff still developing with crypto right now. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But hopefully this video helped you all out, kept you all up to date. Uh, if you all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please like the video if you liked it. Really appreciate it. And please subscribe if you haven't. Thank you to all my subscribers and for everyone watching. Till next time.